Previously, we looked at the notion of a group homomorphism, and then we introduced the notion of a ring, and so here we're going to look at a ring homomorphism. So let's go ahead and look at the definition. So let's suppose R and S are rings, then a map phi from R to S is called a ring homomorphism if for all A and B in R, phi of A plus B is equal to phi of A plus plus phi of B. So notice this addition right here is happening within the ring R. This addition over here is happening within the ring S. Then phi of AB is equal to phi of A phi of B. So again, notice over here, this is um, multiplication happening in R, and this is multiplication happening in S. Then furthermore, I haven't written this down, but if it is a bijective ring homomorphism, it's called a ring isomorphism. And also we need this notion of a kernel. And you might think, well, I've got two operations. Should the kernel be with respect to the addition or multiplication? In other words, should it be everything sent to the identity of addition or the identity of multiplication? Well, remember that we don't always have an identity with respect to multiplication. So it'll be this thing with respect to addition. So the kernel of phi will be all elements from the domain, so R, such that phi of A equals zero and this is the zero element inside of S. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at some examples real quick. So the first example that I'd like to look at um, is this one. So let's take phi from Q adjoin X. So let's just recall that those are all polynomials whose coefficients are um, within the rational numbers. And then let's, send, let's say that the codomain is R, Okay, and then we will define phi evaluated at a polynomial x will be that polynomial evaluated at the square root of 2. Okay, so let's really quick look at an example of what this thing does. So let's say phi of x cubed plus x squared minus 3. So let's see, that's going to give us the square root of 2 cubed plus the square root of 2 squared minus 3. But notice this is going to give you 2 root 2, and then this is going to give you 2 minus 3, which is minus 1. So we get 2 root 2 minus 1. So that's the image of this guy right here. Okay, good. And then uh, maybe another thing to notice is that the image of this map, we haven't shown that this is a homomorphism yet, but the image of this map um, will be the so-called field Q adjoined root 2, which is sometimes called uh, Q with uh, curly braces, or sorry, with round braces or parentheses root 2. So um, it's pretty clear that this is the image because this is everything formed by A plus B root 2, where A and B come from the rational numbers. It's also pretty easy to check that that's a field. Um, every non-zero element has an inverse. Okay, now the next thing that I want to do is check that this thing is is indeed a homomorphism. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and check the addition part first. So let's say that P of X and Q of X are in this polynomial ring Q adjoin X. And then let's say phi of P of X plus Q of X. So notice that's going to be P evaluated at root 2 plus Q evaluated at root 2. That's very, very clearly the same thing as phi of P of X plus phi of Q of X. And then uh, we can check the multiplication in exactly the same way. So let's notice that phi of P of X times Q of X is going to be p of root 2 times q of root 2, which is very clearly phi of p of x, phi of q of x. Okay, good. So now the next thing that I want to do is see what the kernel is, but um, we need a bit more room for that. So I'll erase the board up to this point and then we'll uh, look at the kernel. So now we're ready to calculate the kernel. So the kernel of phi, so that's going to be all polynomials p of x from this polynomial ring q adjoin x, where if you evaluate them with phi, in other words, 
you plug in the square root of two. This is sometimes called the evaluation homomorphism. You get zero. Okay, good. So now let's go ahead and take an arbitrary polynomial inside this kernel and get a feel for what it looks like. Well, so by this definition, which we've just written down, that means P evaluated at root two equals zero. In other words, the square root of two is a root of this polynomial, but that tells us that uh, P of X can be written as X minus the square root of two times some other polynomial Q of X. And the important thing here is all of this is happening over R adjoined X. In other words, polynomials with real coefficients because otherwise we couldn't write this X minus root two as root two is not a rational number. But then in order to keep all of this inside uh, the rational numbers, um, it's gonna be important to notice that uh, in fact, we can factor out an x plus root two out of this as well. And that's because these two will combine, um, and I'll go ahead and call this uh, q tilde x what's left over. And this, is can and this can happen inside of q adjoint x. In other words, q tilde is inside q adjoint x. But now we can multiply these together, and this is gonna give us x squared minus two times q tilde x. So we've got something like that. So what that tells us is that the kernel of phi in this case is going to be all multiples of um, x squared minus two. So we can write it like this, x squared minus two times f of x, where f of x runs through all elements of q adjoin x, okay. But sometimes that can be written in the following way. So this is x squared minus two times q adjoin x. Okay, so there we have our kernel for this uh, homomorphism. I'll erase the board and then we'll do another example or two. So uh, for our next example, we'll look at this classic one, which is the ring homomorphism from Z to ZN, which takes M to the equivalence class of M. And often we'll drop these brackets for the equivalence class, just keeping in mind that's we're inside of ZN. Okay, so notice that this thing will be on to because we can hit every element, which is just zero through n minus one with all the integers pretty handily. Another thing um, that we might want to check is that this, this is a homomorphism. So uh, first of all, the addition, that's going to be okay because all of this can happen on the level of uh, abelian groups. And this is actually true almost all of the time that the addition is just gonna be taken care of immediately because we've checked it previously with examples having to do with abelian groups and we've done this before in this case. Now uh, let's go ahead and check the multiplication. So uh, let's suppose that um, M1 and M2 are integers. And then uh, let's say phi of M1 times M2. So notice that is going to become the equivalence class of M1 and M2. But the multiplication defined inside of Zn is defined by, this is the equivalence class of M1 times the equivalence class of M2. It's easy to check that that multiplication is a well-defined operation, um, which is usually done kind of at the beginning of a class like this. It's like elementary number theory. Um, but that is going to be exactly phi of M1, phi of M2. So there, the multiplication uh, property of the homomorphism is okay. Now let's go ahead and notice that we also get the kernel for free, given the fact that we've done this with abelian groups before, and the kernel here is NZ. So I'll erase the board and then we'll look at uh, maybe two more. So the next example I want to look at is this one that takes uh, polynomials with real coefficients into the complex numbers. And what we will do is we'll just evaluate polynomials at i. So uh, maybe notice that this is a homomorphism um, in a very similar 
to our first example. So I won't even check that, but just very, very similar to our first example, this is a homomorphism. And last time it was the evaluation homomorphism we were, where we were evaluating at the square root of two. This time we're evaluating at i, but really the evaluation homomorphism holds evaluating at anything. Um, okay, good. So uh, the next thing that we want to do is maybe look at an example. So let's notice that phi of x to the fourth plus x cubed minus 3x squared plus 2. So that's going to be equal to i to the fourth plus i cubed minus 3i squared plus 2. But i to the fourth is 1. So that's like negative 1 squared. i cubed is equal to negative i i squared is negative 1, that makes that plus 3, and then we have plus 2. So in the end, we have 5 minus i. Okay, so this polynomial is sent to 5 minus i. Another thing that we can notice is that if f of x is inside the kernel of phi, that's the same thing as saying f evaluated at i equals 0 right, which tells us that um, over polynomials in Cx, we know that f of x has got a factor as x minus i times g of x, but that's happening over polynomials um, in the complex numbers. But uh, what we can say is since we don't want this to happen over the complex numbers, uh, again, a very similar method to what we did in this first example, we know that f of x is going to be equal to x squared plus 1 because that is going to be the real polynomial that has a root of i times, maybe we'll call it h of x. And like I said, this is happening over r bracket x which tells us that this kernel is going to be all multiples of x squared plus 1. So we can write that as x squared plus 1 times our polynomial ring r of x. Um, okay, great. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll do one more. So for our last example, we want to look at this map from the complex numbers to 2 by 2 matrices with real entries, and it takes a plus b i to a minus b, b a. Okay, so uh, let's check that this is a homomorphism first. Okay, so let's see, phi of a plus b i plus c plus d i. So doing the addition of complex numbers inside of there, that's going to give us phi of a plus c plus b plus d i. But now applying our map, that's going to give us a plus c on the diagonal, and then b plus d um, negative in the upper right, and uh, b plus d positive in the lower left. But it's pretty easy to see that you can uh, write this as the sum of a minus b, uh, b a, with um, c minus d, d c, those two two by two matrices. But that's exactly equal to phi of a plus b i plus phi of c plus d i. So this is a homomorphism with respect to the additive groups. So now let's uh, erase this part of the board and then we'll check the multiplicative property for the homomorphism. So now we're ready to check the uh, multiplicative property for the homomorphism. So let's look at phi of a plus b i times c plus d i. And let's uh, notice that that's going to be phi of, so it's going to be a minus, sorry, a, c, minus b, d. So that'll be the real part of that product. And we can see that by these red arrows, arrows that I'm drawing. So a times c, and then uh, b, i times d, i. So that's going to be minus b, d. And then plus, so the, the imaginary part of this product will be made by the blue arrows that I'll draw. So it'll be a, d, plus b uh, c. So um, we have a d plus b c i. So that's going to turn into the following matrix. 
So we have A, C minus B, D, and then A, C minus B, D, and then here we have A, D plus B, C, and then down here we have, sorry, this should be negative, and then down here we have A, D plus B, C, and that should be positive. Okay, great. But now, notice that this matrix factors into the following. So A minus B, B, uh, A, times uh, C minus D, D, C. Okay, so let's just go ahead and check that real quick. So if we take this, A minus B, and multiply here, we get A, C minus B, D. Um, great, if we take this and multiply here, we get minus AD minus BC, so that's going to be exactly this term. If we take the second row, swivel it, we get um, AD plus BC, and if we take the second row and swivel it here, we get this term exactly right here. So that's exactly what we need, but notice that this is phi of A plus BI times phi of C plus DI. So in fact, uh, it does satisfy this multiplicative property. So in other words, this is a homomorphism of rings. So now let's calculate the kernel of this thing because we've just shown that it's a homomorphism of rings. So if A plus BI is in the kernel of phi, that tells us that phi of A plus BI is going to be equal to the zero element of M two by two R, but that is equal to the zero matrix. But if uh, something is equal to the zero matrix, well, let's go ahead and write what phi of A plus BI is. So it's A minus B, B, A. So that needs to be equal to the zero matrix, but that means that A and B are both equal to zero, but what that tells us is that A plus BI is equal to zero, but that means that if something's in the kernel, then it's equal to zero. In other words, the kernel of phi is equal to just zero. Okay, good, but what that tells us, um, by something that uh, will be left as an exercise, that tells us that phi is injective. And then from an exercise, uh, phi is injective if and only if the kernel of phi is equal to just zero. And so that follows similarly from uh, the proof in group theory that says that uh, homomorphism in is injective if and only if the kernel is only the identity element. And it's just in this case, we're dealing with the additive identity element. So we have phi is injective, which tells us that if we just look at the image of this map, it's going to be surjective onto the image, which means C is going to be isomorphic to the image of phi inside of M two by two R because we have injectivity and then if we only look at the image, we have surjectivity, so that gives us bijectivity. So I'll erase the board and then we will summarize that. So we already saw that phi was injective, so let's go ahead and look at the image of phi, but that's really easy to see. That's going to be all A uh, minus B, B A, where A and B come from um, R, and this lives inside of M two by two R. So again, that's like really easy to check. This is obviously a subring because it's the image of a ring homomorphism. We haven't checked that the image of a ring homomorphism is always a subring, but that's another thing that will be left for an exercise. So the image of phi here is that. Um, subring within M2 by 2R, but then um, uh, what we have here is that uh, C has to be isomorphic via this homomorphism phi to this image of phi, which we just described right up here. And so, why is it isomorphic? Well, it's onto the image, and then via this map we showed it was uh, injective already. So this gives us a nice version of the complex numbers inside of two by two matrices. So um, that's a good place to end this video.